If we say ethics is, you know, the moral judgments that people make, there are then questions about those moral judgments, so like can they be true? What are they referring to? Are the properties that they seem to refer to real? And so on. And in his first great book, uh, Reasons and Persons, Derek really um, avoided these meta-ethical questions, and he did it deliberately. Uh, and that is because he held the following view. He thought that if he considered them, he would take a very subjective view of ethics. And in particular, he thought he'd take the view of J.L. Mackey, who was another philosopher around in Oxford at the time, who argued that all moral judgments are false. And Derek thought, if I believe that all moral judgments are false, I will give up doing ethics, and that's not something I really want to do. So he, he just avoided the, the issues and just kept on doing, doing ethics. Then he read uh, some work by an American philosopher called uh, Christine Korsgaard, who is a Kantian. And she was arguing for a view of meta-ethics which Derek didn't like very much. Essentially the idea that ethics is in certain ways constructed. It's rationally constructed, but it's kind of made up. And Derek didn't like the idea that ethics could be made up, even if it was being made up rationally. And uh, he made a, quite a good philosophical joke about Korsgaard. He said um, that Korsgaard woke, woke him from his undogmatic slumber. Uh, only philosophers will understand that joke, but it was a good one. What happened was, Reasons of Persons came out in 1984... Uh, he, well, he, became, he was already quite famous, but then he became very famous and he was invited all over the place to give talks. And for a while he would say, uh, I haven't got any new ideas, I'm not going to write any more papers, all I'll talk about is reasons and persons. So he would just take the book with him and people would ask questions. Um, then uh, he did think about other things. I mean, for example, he started thinking about equality and various other issues. And I think when Jonathan Dancy had the idea of some essays on reasons and persons which Derek was going to reply to, that kind of that kind of forced him to go beyond the stuff in reasons and persons and think about things like um, meta ethics. Um, and then then he read Course Guard and then he was was off. Um, but I guess on what matters, prob you could argue it took about twenty years to write, nearly twenty years. So Derek, Derek um, uh, had been quite wrong about what would happen when he started doing meta-ethics. In fact, he didn't take the subjectivist route at all. He became almost like a Platonist. You know, he, 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 he took the, the most objectivist, uh, almost the most objectivist uh, view of ethics one could take. So, for example, he argued for what people call uh, non-naturalist realism. So the idea is... These ethical properties, like uh, something's being a reason for an action or something's being wrong, they are real properties in the world. And they are non-natural properties in the sense that they're not the sort of properties that science could tell you about. They're, they're autonomous, they're independent of science. Um, now, non-naturalism was... Um, advocated by a philosopher called G. Moore at the beginning of the 20th century uh, in uh, a famous book called Principia Ethica. Uh, and most people thought it was just a totally weird view, which it, actually it kind of was in the way Moore developed it. Um, so it wasn't very popular. So Derek, Derek um, revived this view. I think uh, influenced by the uh, tradition of British moral philosophy, and in particular, perhaps the work of um, Clark and Price. So we've got realism as the metaphysics. The question then is, well, um, can we know uh, about these truths? They're, they're there, but how, how do we know about them? And there, uh, Derek was, I would say, uh, a kind of intuitionist, though whether he would have accepted that label, I don't know. So he thought we could grasp these truths uh, and we could and we could uh, at least um, possibly know them um, Derek said 
that um, when people criticised him, and, uh, and subjectivists criticised him, he said he had a personal interest in defending his um, position, in that he thought if he were wrong, then he would have wasted his life, because nothing would matter. Uh, hence the title of the book, On What, on what Matters. <laughs> so one of the things that Derek thought mattered was his, his life, um, and he thought that if his arguments were mistaken, then uh, not only would this book not matter, nothing would matter, including his, his life. Uh, and I'm rather sympathetic to that view. So I would say the most common view in philosophy is that metaethics, the study of ethics, and ethics are quite separate. But if we think about Mackey, so this is somebody who's believing that all moral judgments are false, there does seem to, seem to me something slightly odd about on the one hand saying all moral judgments are false and then making a load of moral judgments. Uh, there's a kind of tension there, um, which I think could lead to a kind of undermining of ethics and practical ethics, a kind of nihilism, which Derek was very keen uh, to avoid.